F button, ISO auto, which is ISO base 160, ISO limit 12,800, and slowest, slowest shutter speed is 1, 320. Boom, let's go. F4, just so that we know. It's kind of a nice um, aperture so that I'm not, I'm not worried too much about um, the depth of field being too shallow. When you're out doing street stuff, you're looking for interesting scenes interesting light you know there has to be a point to your photograph you can't go walking around snap 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 and one of the tips i always give people is if you can take less pictures even if i walk around here for the next three hours and don't take a single photograph if i do eventually get one it means that the standard i'm trying to achieve is a lot higher um i think people just get well, like me now I'm walking around here thinking I need to take a photograph. I've got my camera in my hand, the light's gorgeous, I need to take a shot. I have to take a shot. Look at this. Freaking chaos down here. <laughs> well, it wasn't like this the last time I came down here. Oh no, this isn't gonna work, is it? All right, let's go over here, it's a bit quieter over here. Interested is subjective to a point, because I think when you it's like anything, when you first start off doing something, like walking around here, I probably take 10 or 15 pictures quite easily and think that, yeah, moderately interesting, something's going on. And then get back to the camera, the computer, and look at them and think, well, what actually is interested in the photographs? Um, it's like anything, a bit of a cliche, unfortunately. Yeah. Where's that sun? Let's get the sun the right way. Um, the more you do something, the better at it you become. And with street photography, the more you shoot, the more discerning you become with it, with what is interesting. So although people say interesting is subjective, it is, but it's only subjective to your level. But the more you shoot and the more experienced you become, interesting becomes far more of a, a challenge. Sorry me, I have to interrupt me. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna start sounding a bit discouraging for beginners. So, interesting. You need to learn how to see, critique, and um, evaluate the good and the bad in any image. So if you see online or social media and books or whatever it is, you need to be able to see the good and the bad and whether or not an, an image is interesting. You're not gonna know when you hit the streets what to take a photo of otherwise. You're gonna be walk, looking around thinking, oh, that's a person on the street, do I take a picture of it? And the, the quicker and the, the more fussy you can be about what is interesting, the better uh, your images will be and also how, how your skill will improve because if you literally have no idea of a standard and just go out, snap, 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 anybody on the street, as far as you're concerned, is street photography, your, your, your standard won't improve because as far as you're concerned, that is street photography. But if you start to gauge what is an interesting photograph based on where the photographer's taken something, you can see exactly that he's caught a moment, he's caught a really good interaction, something unique, something funny. You can see a point to the photographs. So surround yourself by really, really good photographs. Surround yourself, get books. Street photography books are really, really good. I've got loads of street photography books and I've learned lots from them. Um, but I've also got some really amazingly talented street photography friends. And when I see their work, I can always sort of gauge what their photograph was of. It, be, it might be a geometric uh, or aesthetic, or it might be something abstract, or it might be um, very, very uh, well composed, it might be the light that they're working with, it might be that they're really good at finding very interesting details, or either way, when I look at the photograph, I can see straight away what the purpose and what drew them to take the photograph. Now, they've got to that level because they've got really fussy and they've got really good at composing and they've got really good at filtering out the crap and they'll, they'll only show images that they consider a standard. So either, give yourself a project isn't a bad way of doing it because at least then you can start looking for, say, reflections and by the end of a year, your vision towards reflections will be greatly tuned because you'll be obsessed with looking for just reflections. Um, but be willing to develop, be willing to accept when you're taking a bad photograph. Don't be one of these people that takes a photograph and think everything you take is amazing because it's on the street, it's acceptable. Set yourself a standard. Um, I, I look back at some of my early street photography videos and they are crap. I do not understand <laughs> what I saw and what I thought was interesting when I started. So that just goes to show that interesting is subjective to the level you're at because now I look back at them images and I just don't understand why I've shared them. I literally don't understand at the time why I thought they were interesting. But of course, the standard I'm at now, that might be the same in 10 years time. I might look back at why I am, where I am now and go, oh shit then as well. <laughs> but you've got to be able to grade an image. You've got to be able to see the purpose in an image. You can't just take any photograph on a street and say, right, we'll just call it street photography. It has to have a le level of interest. Um, learn how to grade images. Going forward, and in this video, I've actually put a, a score grading uh, system so we can be a bit harsh. 
being harsh is something I just I just found has helped me massively improve all aspects of my my photography. I'm really strict with um, the standard that I'm trying to achieve, especially for my my commercial customers and stuff like that. So. Um, as we go through the video, check out these photographs and then look at the grading and see if you, you don't have to agree with the grading. Again, it's subjective, but, ex, but learn how to see a good and bad image. Learn how to see a pointless image. If it's a pointless image, just acknowledge it's a pointless image. Don't be too proud about it, but research what street photography is. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. Hope that wasn't too patronizing for beginners. And uh, yeah, I know it's a cliche, but shoot as much as you can, but really do find, how, find out how to grade and, uh, and critique your images. Anyway, let's get back to the video. I like that shot. That's a bit in the interesting part of that photograph was, I suppose, the mystery of what the, the, the lady was reading and stuff like that. And then I just happened to catch, I happened to be there when she looked at her watch. I haven't checked it. But like an idiot, I thought I'll go for the uh, shallow depth of field shooting over her shoulder, blur the shoulder. Reading the book, checking the time. I don't know, it's got a bit of a, a story behind it. I think it's interesting. Let me know. Do you think it's interesting? And uh, yeah, do you get the point I'm trying to make? <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to F4 on the camera and I'm going to underexpose by one stop. Bit of a cheat there, underexpose. Aperture priority otherwise. I'm like, oh! <laughs> that looks fun. Oh, your head bus. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come back in a minute when you've got it going. Well, now. Yeah, I'm walking up and down. I'll see you in a sec. Right, that bloke did not look like it was safe to be around a naked flame. Never mind paraffin, whatever he's pouring on it. <laughs> I want to give fuck all. Ah, clean bastards. Send him here. I think he was interesting. Nice portrait shot. So, yeah. What do you think? Interesting? I wanted to um, use the shallow depth of field, but he was moving quite a lot, so I went down to F2, not too much, um, and then tried to get the linear line of the instrument with the big hole pointed at me. So yeah, interesting composition, I think, if nothing else. <laughs> Hope you like it. take one thing from this video honestly aim for one photograph every time you go out for for the uh, for the day with your camera aim obviously take as many pictures as you feel necessary less is better as always um, but aim for one shot when you come back and you go through your photographs aim for one shot that you're happy with don't try and get like 10 or 20 photographs I used to be a git for this because I was filming for you guys and I thought I'm not gonna put a video together unless there's like 10 photographs I'm pleased with you know and that put me into so much pressure so I suppose it's a bit like uh, shooting a wedding because I can't just give the bride and group one photograph I'm happy with. Um, <laughs> I don't think I could tell well. But if you're doing street photography, honestly, look, look for one high standard. That is the best way. One high standard photograph at the end of every shoot, landscape or street. Honestly, it's changed the way I look at photography. It means you relax. Anyway, how are we doing for interesting? Are we getting on all right? If you're enjoying the video, obviously hit the subscribe and do all that so you can make sure you, you're around for the next one. I've actually got about... 20 street photography videos that I haven't edited, some from Istanbul. So hopefully, when things calm down, I'll be able to get time to do them. So, yes, hope you're enjoying. So just took a photograph, that lady, um, taking a selfie in front of St Paul's. Now, I don't think it's an interesting photograph at all. I don't know why I took it. Um, I don't know why I took it, but looking at the photograph at the back of the camera, I wouldn't post that anywhere. It's just not an interesting photograph and kind of pointless. So let me know what you think anyway. It's just a woman <laughs> taking a selfie. Is there anything interesting? I don't know. I don't know. The first one, the one I missed actually, I don't think I got it anyway. She was doing a pout for the camera, so that was kind of funny. Um, yeah, so <laughs> you can have that element to it, I suppose, but the photograph itself is far from interesting. Anyway, we've got to be discerning. We've got to be fussy. You can't just uh, take a crap load of photographs and think they're all amazing. We've got to be honest with ourselves. See, there's people there, there's a couple there talking. And I know some people would take a photograph of that because they would say that's interesting. No, I don't. Do you think that's interesting? A picture of a couple? I don't know. Am I being too fussy? Let me know if I'm being too fussy. I just followed. <laughs> Followed's the wrong word. Seeing this guy walking over the bridge with his missus, lovely old bloke, lovely old couple. 
enjoying a bit of quiet time in London and then they get hounded by me. So I've seen them uh, taking in the views, but I took a shot and I didn't think that was very interesting at all because they were, they were obviously taking in the views, but you could, as a viewer, you couldn't see in the picture what they were looking at. So I didn't like that, but I liked what they were wearing or what he was wearing. So I followed him over the bridge because you've got St Paul's, that big lump in the background, uh, as they were walking towards it. And I, I, I probably took about 200 shots <laughs> of that couple. So I had con continuous low, um, focusing the F4 on him, so that the, uh, the thing in the background was blurred. I just wanted him really with that, with that sort of walking to the church sort of kind of look. So I think it's interesting. I just don't think I got the composition that I really, really want. I tried to go really low to get some interesting angles. Didn't really work because he was a bit close to, the, to his lovely wife, but the thought was there. Anyway, let me know what you think them shots were interesting. Just keep moving your feet. Keep going forward. Just keep moving your feet. And just get rid of what you don't like. Whoa. From where? Eritrea, near Ethiopia and Somalia. Oh, wow. Oh, how long have you been in the UK? Five years. Oh, uh, nice. You like it? Yeah. I grew. I wasn't. I was born here, but we moved and came back. So ah, welcome well, back. <laughs> Let's take a quick snap. Oh, right, hang on a sec. Three, two, one. Oh, I like it. Brilliant. I'll. Um, you got your eyes a bit better in them, wasn't it? That's good, doesn't it? I'll give you a card and I'll send it to you. Lock his, lock his glasses. Not an interesting photograph as such. Yeah, not interesting, but I like his glasses. I, I do like him. I think he's quite interesting. <laughs> but... I love, I love street performers, I'm a big sucker for street performers. London's amazing for it. So yeah, they were interesting, ish, clever. Definitely more their skill than mine. <laughs> I like that, because I like the writing, it's good. Yeah, and, What do you think? I look nice, man. Yeah? It's a bit crazy, but did it work? That's the question. Did it work? She's bugging off now, but did it work? I don't know. I don't know, maybe. It's hard to tell on the back of the camera. Maybe. I like the reflection of the guy that kind of standing like a ghost over her. That was the idea, but I'm not sure if it's clear enough of the photograph. I tried to recompose the shot, but the reflection didn't work. Let me know, does it work, doesn't it?